Hey guys, welcome to Hashtag Ask The Legal Queen. This series is all about those of you that find yourselves perhaps stuck in a family law issue, you don't know which way to turn, you don't know what to do next. It might be about divorce, it might be about child custody, it might be about anything family law related, and you don't quite know what to do next, which way to turn. I'm here to help answer some of your questions, offer you some support, sign, post you, give you some guidance as to what form it is that you need to fill out, even help you fill the form out if need be. And for those of you that don't know how to ask a question and you'd like to ask me a question, go over to my Discord. The link is in the description box below. Leave your question there and that's where I'll pick up all my questions from. The Discord community, for those of you that haven't seen it, is a community that I've created whereby you can leave a question about divorce, about children, about finances. I will pop in and answer as many questions as I can, help you guys to signpost, give you some guidance as to what you do next. But there's also other people on there. So I've got a couple of moderators on there that will also help me signpost to you guys and give you some guidance. The community itself is also answering questions from their experiences and what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. It's a great community, over 2,000 people in there right now. So get yourselves over there, check it out. Hi, me and my partner have lived together for four years. I bought the house two years ago in my name only. He gave me no money for the deposit, but has contributed to bills. We are engaged, have a nine month old baby. Once married, does he have an equal share in my property as it was bought before we got married? It may not be an equal share, but he will have a share because once you're married, it then becomes the former matrimonial home. So it's not always about 50-50 split, but will he be entitled to a share of it to make a claim towards any equity that's in it? Yes, he will, because it's a matrimonial asset. My husband is the earner of the family. Each time I need money for anything, I have to ask. We don't hold a joint account and I have no idea how much he earns each month. I have no money of my own except a very small personal pension of £175 a month. How am I supposed to pay for a divorce fee of over £500 up front if I have no income of my own? I can't access his bank details or statements either. All I have is the statements to my account which he pays into when I ask him for funds. I would say to you there, check out on the court website, so government.co.uk, the EX160. It's a form that you can fill out and the court will check to see if you are eligible for what we call a fee remission. And what that means is that you might get a partial exemption, so they could drop that court fee from 593 down to 500 or 400, or you might get a full exemption, in which case you can submit your divorce petition without having to pay the court fee. Hi, I've been following your post on Facebook and I think you're great, so clear. I have moved out of the marital home with my 15 and 28 year old, my husband is in a four bedroom property. He's refusing to pay any maintenance. Question is, he has a lot of debts which he is blaming all on the renovation of the house, but I know a lot of them are his personal and his business debts. He is a builder. Am I liable for his personal or business debts? He has been a limited company for about four years, thank you. So the first thing I'm gonna say is you really should take some bespoke legal advice on this, okay? Because I'm unable to answer your question directly, but what I would say is there's a lot going on there. So in order to give yourself some protection and to know what you're legally entitled to and what you may be liable for, please get some um, independent legal advice. However, to generalise your question, to help yourself potentially and others, are you liable for his personal debts? Are you liable for his business debts? You will be liable for matrimonial debts. So any debt that has been incurred in the marriage that you have both enjoyed. Sometimes couples take out a holiday on a credit card, matrimonial debt. They might take out finance to have a new kitchen fitted in the, in the matrimonial home, matrimonial debt. The business debts, maybe not. That depends if you are named on the business. The business debts really will be to his business. However, the reason I said take some independent legal advice is because the business may somehow be connected to the former matrimonial home. I don't know. Hi there, quick question. If I'm divorced two decades now, is my ex entitled to anything that I inherit from my mom's living will estate? The question is, have you got a financial order? If you don't have a financial order, then you haven't severed the financial ties. You can have your divorce, your decree absolute, 
10, 20, 30 years, doesn't matter. That All that does is bring your marriage to an end. What it doesn't do is sever those financial ties. So if you have a financial order, yes, the inheritance is protected because that prevents him from making a further financial claim against you. If you haven't got a financial order, that means that he can make a financial claim against you and therefore your inheritance may be at risk. Hi, my husband apparently filed for a divorce three weeks ago. How long does it take for the papers to come through? So since the introduction of the new no-fault divorce that came on the 6th of April, the courts, as you can imagine, have been swamped with divorce applications. Generally, they are served via email. So if your husband has put your email address on the divorce petition, I would have thought you'd have that by now. Check your spam, maybe it's in there. If your husband didn't put your email address on the divorce petition and he only put your postal address perhaps wait another couple of weeks because obviously the office are literally getting the divorce petition putting it into the envelope you know putting it through the franking machine sending it off to be posted may take a little longer really worried me and my boyfriend have been together 20 years the house is in his name and he has paid the mortgage and all the utilities i have paid the food nights out and holidays am i homeless if he decides he has done or if he dies i think the question you're asking me is do you have any entitlement to the home and unfortunately, no, because you're not married and you haven't, you're not named on the mortgage. You haven't made a significant financial contribution to the property. You've made a financial contribution to the relationship, i.e. you've paid for the holidays, you've paid for the food, etc., but not to the property. And without you being married to him, you therefore potentially have no claim to his property. Hi, I'm wondering if you can help. Can you help with financial orders? My husband has filed for divorce and I'm staying in a house with three young children, but could really use some advice about the financial order. How much would that cost? That's gonna depend on a couple of things. So the first thing to decide is, are you and your husband in agreement to what's gonna go into the financial order? Have you both sat down and spoke about it? And therefore you just need a solicitor to help you draft that and tell you if it's fair and reasonable. Because if that's the case, lots of law firms will offer a fixed fee. That's only going to apply if you're both in agreement. That fixed fee can vary depending upon what's going into the order, but ultimately at least you know from the outset what you're going to be charged. If you're not in agreement with your husband and therefore we might need to exchange some paperwork, which we call financial disclosure, and then give you some advice as to what you're entitled to and then perhaps negotiate with the other side, that's going to involve more work and therefore you're going to be on, on a more traditional hourly rate structure. Now, I can't tell you exactly how much that's going to be, but if you speak to your solicitor and you're not in agreement, they can give you an indication of the price that that's going to cost you. That was a lot of questions this week, guys, but I really hoped you enjoyed that. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and always leave a comment. I love to read the comments from you guys.